Hello everyone. Today we will present a topic called GMRES that is generalized minimal residual. Let's get started. First of all, we would like to discuss how every problem almost boils down to solving ax equal to b. As mentioned in the slides, the non-exhaustive list of fields where we require to solve such a problem. You take any area and if you have a set of linear equations to solve, you are sure to solve ax equal to b. So here we are discussing an efficient way to solve ax equal to b. Our problem is to solve ax equal to b and solution is to find x efficiently. So conventionally we find a inverse to get a solution, but the computational cost of getting a matrix inverse is of order n cube by using gauss jordan elimination. We here will discuss an algorithm which is an iterative method that if implemented correctly can give a solution in the complexity of order n. Informally if I introduce the method GMRES as the definition says the GMRES is a Kirlov subspace method that computes at the rth step the best least square solution from the Kirlov subspace which is kr a comma b. To understand it intuitively or to visualize what is Kirlov subspace and how the GMRES is finding out solutions, we will uh, see a short animation. So this is K1 that is a one dimensional span in n dimensional space as B is n dimensional. The red dotted lines show the span of B. First we find a solution in this space and need not go further if satisfied. Otherwise we go to the next dimension that is as shown by this gray plane K2. The span of B and AB, a two dimensional subspace in n dimensions. Again, if we satisfied with the solution here, we stop. Otherwise, we go to the next dimension to search for an answer that is K3, the span of B, AB and A square B, a three dimensional subspace in n dimensions. And this same logic repeats till the n dimensional subspace in n dimensions or until we are satisfied. Before jumping into the GMRES method, we will have to be equipped with some important concepts which are residual, Kirlov subspace and Arnoldi process. The residual is defined as the L2 norm of B minus AX. As we have mentioned earlier, we want to find the solution for AX equal to B. This leaves us two main cases to get the solution. The first case is B belongs to the column space of A where there is a solution and hence the residual is zero. In the second case, B does not belong to the column space of A. There is no solution here and we have to find the closest possible solution. For this to happen, the residue must be minimized, which gives us a least square error solution. Let us say we want to find the solution for AX equal to B, where we know the matrix A only by the matrix vector products and A is an invertible matrix. Now we will assume some vectors such as a b, a b, a square b and so on. Out of these vectors we pick the first n plus 1 vectors each of n dimensional which will be dependent. So there will be some non-zero alphas in this linear combination. Assume the first smallest non-zero alpha for the vectors to be dependent b alpha k. Then a inverse can be computed using the weak Kelly Hamilton theorem as shown. It is clear that A inverse can be calculated from the matrix vector products. Therefore, these vectors become an obvious choice for the solution subspace. Formally defining it, it is a space spanned by these vectors known as the Kirlov subspace. The Kirlov matrix is the matrix obtained by stacking these vectors as the columns of the matrix defined by K as shown. This subspace is very popular for obtaining the solution to iterative methods such as GMRES, Arnoldi, conjugate gradient and etc. Now we will describe about the Arnoldi process which is the heart of GMRES method. Basically it is an iterative algorithm similar to Gram-Schmidt method which generates the L2 orthonormal basis for a Krilov subspace. Also it can be thought of a similarity transform to reduce a matrix to Heisenberg matrix. Moving on to the algorithm. First, we will be choosing an initial vector v1 such that its norm is equal to 1. Now, we obtain the entries of the Heisenberg matrix Hij as the inner product of v1 along with the next vector av1. Now, we will subtract the component of v1 along av1 to get the next vector v2. 
to make this orthonormal we divide the v2 by its norm and we perform this iteratively until the required dimensions are obtained after this process is completed we will be ending up with two different matrices and very important matrices those are the vk and hk vk is the matrix which contains the basis vectors for the krilov subspace hk is the upper hessenberg matrix upper hessenberg matrix is a special type of triangular matrix where the elements below the first sub diagonal are zero as we can see hk can be written as vk hermitian a vk and this is the similarity transform of a so every a can be transformed into hk without changing the eigen values so the algorithm now is pretty straight forward to understand because we know arnoldi's method for creating an orthonormal basis over the kirlov subspace so in step 1 we choose x0 and get residual r0 in step 2 we do nothing more than arnoldi's algorithm thus generating the matrix vk and hk respectively in step 3 we write the approximate solution as xk equals x0 plus zk where zk is some linear combination of vk governed by yk and we get yk by minimizing the expression jy here in every iteration we minimize the l2 norm of beta e1 minus hk bar y for more details on how this expression of jy comes about please pause the video and ponder for some time or look at the detailed derivation provided in the video's description but wait there is a problem when the number of iterations that is k increases the storage requirements and the operations increase tremendously as shown by k and half k square n respectively but there is a catch we can restart the same algorithm repeatedly after a fixed number of steps while storing the results of the previous run and using them as input to the present run which we call as gmres m so uh, now we modify the algorithm that is keeping steps 1 and 2 the same as the original gmres in step 3 instead of subscript k we use m because now the run stops after m iterations rather than k in step 4 we define residual rm and stop it if it is under tolerance otherwise define x not in terms of the latest solutions available for the next run so uh, that was all about theory let's see how to implement the algorithm from slide 4 that is introduction to gmres we know gmres calculates the best least square error solution at the rth step from the kirlov subspace which we can write mathematically as the step shown on the left it minimizes the norm of residual taken iteratively over the kirlov subspace with dimension increasing by 1 every step on the right hand side with the help of arnoldi's orthogonal v matrix we write x as the linear combination of the columns of v therefore from the left to right we shifted our unknowns from x to c now for solving we take the qr decomposition of avr as qr rr and put it back on the right hand side steps doing so we get a new set of steps as shown here we solve the triangular system by back substitution to get c followed by our unknowns x now we will look at our implementation we have implemented the algorithm in matlab for illustration we have taken two random matrices a and b and a random vector b of order 100 we have chosen a and b in such a way that a is ill conditioned matrix and b is well conditioned matrix we can also observe that from the eigen value cluster shown in figure 1 the blue dots indicate the eigen values of a and orange dot represents the eigen values of b the eigen values of a are clustered near 0 and that of b are clustered away from 0 in this case which is 10 now we'll compare the solution of gmrs with the exact solutions on the left side the solution comparison is shown for matrix a and on the right side for matrix b we can clearly see that in 50 iterations the gmrs solution is nowhere near the exact solution on increasing the number of iterations to 90s the gmrs started to converge started to converge and in about 100 iterations it almost gave about the original solution similar is the analysis for b but it converged with much less number of iterations compared to a that is in almost about 6 to 7 iterations the gmrs solution is almost exact now if we look for the convergence of gmrs on a and b we can clearly see that a took around 100 iterations to converge with an error of order 10 power minus 14 in about 5 milliseconds and b took around 7 iterations with an error of 10 power minus 6 in about 0.96 milliseconds to conclude gmrs give slow convergence for the matrices whose eigen values are clustered near 0 
and fast convergence for those whose eigenvalues are clustered away from zero. So there is a trade-off between the computational time and the error. Thank, Thank you. you.